a group, we felt that this provocation was extremely relevant to our future careers as teachers. If we can't control and gain the respect of our students, how are we meant to actually teach them? So during my observation days, I had a mix of classes. Like there were some classes where some uh, the students were really doing their work and other classes where they really weren't interested and they were misbehaving. And I really found that the difference between the classes were that the teachers had set either a positive environment for learning up or a negative environment. And this environment of, of, or dynamic really determined whether they could control the students or not. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name's William Glasser. I was a prominent psychiatrist in the 60s and uh, was publishing right up through the 70s and 80s on classroom behaviour. I introduced choice theory to the classrooms and um, essentially my uh, teaching, my theory on classroom management distills down to the, the most important thing is to build a respectful relationship with your students. Without a respectful relationship, um, things that may appear to be common sense from a disciplinary point of view are actually doing far more damage and we'll run through some of the problems that our case study teacher did in a minute. Because with the right relationship, every student can succeed. We're going to look at a case study where the teacher has created a negative dynamic in the classroom and employs modes of external con control of her students. Let's look at our case study. There was one particularly difficult class that the teacher had. The class went off to a rocky start as a large group of students turned up late. The teacher set the behavioural rules that they were not to be coming to class late and that it was their problem if they no, didn't complete the task, not the hers. Class, okay? Later during class, the students started to become restless and talk to each other. To control them, she called, Year 9, and again, Year 9. She waited until there was silence. Year 9, we've spoken about this. I should only have to say one year nine for you to listen. I shouldn't have to say year nine more than once. The class lesson plan was set around a group assignment that had a few preliminary tasks that needed to be completed. She gave them one of the preliminary tasks and said, the next task is in groups. If you do the next task quietly, I will let you choose your own groups. During the task, when the class got a bit rowdier, she would say, quiet, or I will choose the groups for you. She said this about three times. Then, when they did get to choose their groups, she was particular about some students working together and separated them in front of the whole class and said that they could not be working in the same group. Girls just don't work well together, you distract each other. Maya, swap with Beck. Beck, you can go with Dane. So, during my work on classroom behavioural management, I identified seven deadly habits which disrupt relationships and thus have a negative effect on classroom discipline. These are criticising, blaming, complaining, nagging, threatening, punishing and rewarding people to control. Unfortunately, these are essentially common sense. Um, in the case of the classroom we saw earlier, there was something that I would not classify necessarily as one of my deadly habits, but it, it's, certainly, um, it's certainly something you want to steer away from, which is the, the, the rules appear to be being changed halfway through. I set up a model called the competency-based classroom and in that model it is essential that students have input into the rules and that the expectations are made very, very clear and then adhered to through the course of the education. 
Let's look at the case study in terms of the seven deadly habits. First, the teacher complains and blames the students. She then nags, complains, and criticizes. She then rewards to control, and when that doesn't work, she threatens the students, saying that she will pick her own groups. Then, she punishes the students, criticizing them in front of the whole class. So the teacher could have um, used more positive um, beha behaviour and language in her classroom and some of the examples could be she pointed out that Dane was already sitting quietly. Um, it then shows that the students that walked in late and gives them an idea that they need to be in class on time by using positive language. Um, and another point is to always reinforce good um, behaviour. So when the students are working, um, they need to, the teacher can mention, okay, um, student, well done on getting two questions done already, you're working well, and that then um, gives a message to the students around them that they need to um, catch up by using positive language. Um, don't discourage the students. Um, by yelling at them and criticising them and threatening them. Um, just constantly work on trying to create a positive relationship between you and the student. Oh, hello, it's you again. So let's have a bit of a discussion about how that um, classroom may have been handled differently. In my opinion, uh, choice theory would best be applied in the opening weeks of the class. It seems as if the, um, the respect um, and the amount of work being put in by the students had already broken down to a point where quite a lot of effort was going to be required to rebuild it. Um, let's assume that the two students that um, the teacher in the case study didn't want in the same group together may have been undermining her more than some of the others earlier in the year. Um, you would want to take them aside and the key to applying choice theory or um, the Glasser approach in that scenario would be to make an honest connection with those students um, and to build a foundation for a respectful relationship in the same way that you would in any other adult endeavour. You're not going to be able to do this if you're using the seven deadly habits. Um, avoid those and make your focus the students' strengths, make the focus your want as their teacher to help them and also don't be afraid to call them out on their responsibilities and their effort in their own education. Just remember, the cornerstone in choice theory is that you don't have control over someone else's actions, not in any real sense. After that, you should have established um, a conversation of respect and honesty, and you want to make the focus their responsibility and their choices in their own education. Um, focus on, I guess, what they're not doing or what they don't like about the subject, use a lot of open questions in doing this and you're likely to get a response more often than not that they don't care um, and that it, the topic is not relevant to them or it's boring anyway. This is actually a good thing. You've got them focusing on their work, you've even got them admitting that they're not doing any work and you're away from, I guess, the behaviour as the issue. You can use this opportunity to tell them that they're smart but to point out that if they refuse to put in any work, um, that there's not much you can do as an educator to assist. Now that you've got them focusing on that, it kind of becomes a case-by-case, student-by-student basis. But your role as a teacher is, I suppose, going to be to inspire the students to care about the subject matter, and that's where you've got these students to. You're going to have to maintain that respect and maintain that honest conversation. Um, but trying to control them and using the external control and negative habits are just going to slowly break down the, your uh, behaviour throughout the entire class. From the provocation question and this case study we have just seen, we have come up with three discussion questions. The first is how do I manage all the tasks in the classroom, including computer, time and teaching content, and simultaneously control behaviour in the class. The second is how do you engage disinterested students enough to make them participate and not distract, other, distract and deter other students. And lastly, how do I keep a positive, positive environment and attitude in the classroom when the class is difficult to manage or I've had a bad day?